What is up, YouTube tool tubers of the world? My name is Brad. Welcome to the workbench. It's been a little while, hasn't it? But we are going to get back into some tool reviews, starting with what I thought was a great pickup during the holidays last year, this Cobalt router table. I'm going to show you what came with it and what I think about it right now. I'd like to take this chance to apologize to absolutely nobody. All right, so here she is. She's pretty simple, pretty basic, but it, it was a great deal. It was 130 bucks for the table and the router, and I mean, I don't think you can get a better deal than that, especially for the quality you're getting here. Let's just look at some of the quick features. It's, they give you this little shitty miter gate. It's plastic with an aluminum runner. I, I don't really use a miter gate with the router table, so it's whatever. Uh, the fence, I, I don't use as much because honestly... The majority of what I'm using a router table for is for edge trimming with bearing guided bits. But if you use the fence, or what I'm doing recently is I'm using the fence more for dust collection purposes, it, the fence has got some cool features. You do have a scale on each side to kind of see where your zero is at to kind of give you a ballpark reference is what I'll call it. It gives you a ballpark reference. There's, there's never going to be anything super accurate on any scale that has lines that are a sixteenth of an inch thick. But for woodworking or the average DIYer, it's going to be accurate enough. It's going to get you in the ballpark. So, of course, the fence can move forward and back. Uh, one cool thing, if I lock down this side, you can use this fence as a small, like, joiner or edge, edge joiner because it does allow you to move the outfeed side forward and back. So, but so if you wanted to, you could put a big straight bit in there and use this somewhat as a joiner, a small joiner, of course. So they do have little wing nuts on the back so you can adjust the size of the opening for the fence, depending on whatever bit you have in there. I tend to leave the influent side a little more open because I am sucking dust out of here and most of the dust tends to get flung back in this little area here. It does come with the little safety shield. I never use it. I feel like it gets in the way and there's so much dust you can't ever see what's really going on in there, in there anyway, so. But if you wanna be a safety Sam, Go ahead, put it down. And it's got this lip to where when your wood comes through, it should lift it up. You know, that's your, that's your personal choice when you're dealing with safety. Let me get this fence off of here, and we'll talk about some other features. First, you got to come underneath, and you got to unlock the router. Not a big deal. A couple wires do get a little bit in the way. Which will allow me to show you this cool feature. You're able to adjust your height in the table, and that's... And there's other tables that'll do that, but if you ever just buy a router table separate from the router, you're never guaranteed this kind of feature. By buying uh, a table where they have the router they know that's going to go on this table, they were able to incorporate, you know, basically a router lift. Or a cheap version of a router lift. So anyways, we're going to pop this out. It does come with three different rings that I don't have right now. <laughs> <laughs> but it comes with three different rings, different size reducer rings. Uh, I just mainly keep this one in there and, not, and don't worry about it. All right, so we're going to bring this router to the top and put a bearing guided bit in there. If you're wondering what this red thing is, go check out my, my video about the Milescraft dust boot. And that'll tell you all about that. Pretty cool little tool, though. Gets it up far enough, you can hit that spindle lock. You can angle your wrench down in there. So the other cool thing is you, it'll take the router itself will take a half inch shank or it comes with this quarter inch reducer since i had the cnc most of my router bits are quarter inch and also because in my tiny shop i usually only do small projects one feature i don't like exactly is i don't like to drop my router bit all the way to the bottom where it's touching i like it to hit the bottom then bring it up just a little bit and sometimes this reducer likes to come with it then also i'm also stuck trying to tighten it without it dropping down which it just it's nothing bad i i should say i guess i'm just being picky at this point because you're gonna have that issue with almost any router you just kind of gotta learn to hold it up while you're tightening down so now i can show you about the bearing guided bit all right so this little starter pin safety pin i don't know exactly what the name of it is it's basically right in line with the center of this. So, the problem is, when you're when you're running a bearing guide bit, you always want to run counterclockwise. The bit's going to be rotating this way. So you want to come in 
and hit that right on the edge, right? Well, if you don't have that pin in there and you're not very experienced on the router table, you could happen to come in here and it's going to just shoot your board this way, you know, especially if you don't have a good grip on it. You know, once you get a little more experience and you're ready for that, you don't necessarily need the pin. You can kind of ease it in there and then go. But if you're new to the router table, uh, and even I used it when I first got this one, because you kind of got to develop a feel for every single tool you get. Put that right up against there, and it's going to... It's going to line you right up with the bearing pretty much. Even if you get a little cockeyed and it does want to take it, you've got all this leverage of the piece out here. So it's not going to be as forceful. So you can kind of correct and then keep on going. Anyways, that, that's a long-winded way of saying I like the pin. So I got her flipped upside down now so you can see the router that comes with it. And you can take this off of the table and use it as a regular fixed base router. It comes with the handles and everything else. Another feature I like is this little box. It's basically a switched outlet that goes to your wall plug, right? And then you plug your router in here and turn your router on so that when you do flip that switch, it's going to turn your router on. What I really like is the fact that they give you a second one. So if you have a shop vac or something that you want to keep connected to this router table, you plug your shop vac in there and automatically when your router comes on, your shop vac will come on at the same time. Pretty cool little feature there. Just to show you how the depth adjustment works, this is the knob on the top. So you're coming through, you're hitting that right there. So this has to be unlocked to do your, your depth adjusting before you go to route. Lock it back down and that makes everything nice and stiff up in there. It does come with an aluminum top, which I kind of like and I kind of dislike. I like it because lots of times I keep my router outside, so I never have to worry about this rusting. But if you have a light colored wood and you're rubbing this on there, sometimes the aluminum will leave a little bit of black smudge on your workpiece. So just prepare for that and know that you're going to have to sand the piece a little bit after you get done on the router table. Just to give you some, some approximate dimensions, we're looking at... As far as the tabletop width, 26 inches all the way to the back, 14 inches from the bit itself, about a little over nine, nine and a quarter or so. The overall footprint, we'll call it, you're within 27 inches, we'll say, about 13 inches tall. Total width or depth. Uh, about 14 inches as well. So yeah, I really like it. I'm, I've been happy with this purchase. I don't think $130 could buy me anything better than what we got here. Especially for a home shop or something like that. So I guess at this point you want to say, hey Brad, let me see it in action. So I'll go ahead and roll some clips of it. And you also get to see how the Milescraft dust router works which by the way if i don't already have this review out it will be coming it is on the way but either way just to realize that while you're seeing this table in action i was also testing out that dust router system oh and real quick before i end this video i forgot to mention the one thing i really don't like is they didn't give you anywhere to store your tools so all your accessories i basically just throw on this table outside in the original bag so I guess if there was a one big complaint I had is they could have put some kind of tool storage in some of this molding and stuff underneath. That would have been really cool. I think that's about going to wrap it up. I mean, I, I can't say that I use a router table as a main tool in my shop. It's mainly, like I said, for edging. 90% of the time I use it with this bit inside of, well, let's say the white side version of this chamfer bit. I just keep the white side for special occasions. <laughs> but I'm usually either got a chamfer bit or a roundover bit in this thing so i can't really tell you how beefy the router is when it comes to you know making dados or anything like that because that's just not how i use it but for doing edge work and stuff like that it hasn't missed a beat for me so keep an eye out it seems to go on sale every year during the holidays for about 130 bucks swing by your local lows during the holidays maybe you can pick one up if you like one appreciate you guys swinging by until next time Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button down there. And we'll holler at you next time. Peace.